Hello and good day. This is the Bible Bard. A bard is a storyteller who recites traditional text associated with a particular oral tradition. And I'm here to recite and to amplify what the literature of the Bible says about who is God and who are human beings. We're in our series on the Ten Commandments. And this is lesson on Commandment 5, Obedience to Parents. Here's the place we are at today. In the literature of the Bible, the ancient Hebrews enter into a covenant, a legal relationship with God. The core of this agreement is called the Decalogue. It is these Ten Commandments as described in Exodus 20 verses 1 through 7 and also in Deuteronomy 5 verse 1 to 22 that form the basis of the national relationship between the nation and God. The first four commands deal with one's relationship to God and talk about apostasy, idolatry, blasphemy, and keeping the Sabbath. The next uh, commands talk about the relationship with people. Command five, parents, six, stealing, seven, killing, eight, adultery, nine, false witness, and ten, coveting. For these podcast episodes... We examine each requirement and provide the story from the literature that details how the ancient Hebrews violated one after another of these ten laws in sequence across the books of this ancient literature. Note, the command dealing with parents is an unusual command by God because it deals with grown children who disobey their parents. The command is also unusual because it includes a blessing of long life to those who obey it discussion. The fifth commandment concerns how children treat their parents. Here is this commandment. In Exodus 20 verse 12, the commandment number five states, quote, honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord God has given you, unquote. And there's a second version given in Exodus 21 verse 17 says, quote, anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death, end quote. Like the idea of defaming the name of God by speaking of or using his name in an empty or vile manner, this command deals with other rebels, disobedient children. And here is how the Hebrews violated this commandment. In the text, Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 18 to 21, the text reads as follows, quote, If someone has a stubborn and rebellious son, who does not obey his father and mother, and will not listen to them when they discipline him, his father and mother shall take hold of him, and bring him to the elders at the gate of his town. They shall say to the elders, This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men of his town are to stone him to death. You must purge evil from among you. All Israel will hear of it, and be afraid. That's from the NIV. Unlike previous violations, this one is hypothetical. The Bible Bard believes that this commandment and the punishment prescribed is based upon actual events. Parents who had grown children who were rebellious to them and defiant actually followed this practice of having the community publish those rebels with death. Summary. To moderns, this offense seems unusually harsh. Some child backtalks his parents. Should this be a capital offense? But that summary of the situation is not in accord with the actual facts provided. The offense is grievous because of at least two reasons. Disobedience to parents is defiance of God. If there's one thing you do not control, it is the parents you are born to. The Bible presents God as deeply involved in your life and king over it. The parents you have are part of his oversight of your life. Anyone who imagines that disobedience to authority, including within the family, only need to examine the social science literature regarding the cultural shifts that occurred in America in the 1960s to see how pervasive this problem can become. Number two, if disobedience to parents is disregarded by society, the text indicates that society, all Israel, will be affected and evil will be unrestrained. At least this is considered a source of social upheaval that is contrary to the peace and tranquility God seems to want in human society. Note, the standard criticism 
is, well, what if the parents are bad, abusive, horrible people? Yes, that is a common situation we see too often in society. I remember a news story I saw where a deranged, drug-addicted mother was killing her three- to four-year-old little girl. As she was dying, the child cried out, Mommy, I love you. Human beings are capable of the most degraded actions, which is the reason why God's alien but moral nature should always be our guide. What I've said before needs to be said again. The Bible presents the Bible's God as having absolute authority over his creation, and that includes humanity. The Psalms alone uh, of all the books provide a great number of texts that claim this authority for God. Too many to list here, but here are just two. Psalm 67 verses 3 and 4 says the following, quote, May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you, God, rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. In Proverbs 16 verse 4, the text states, quote, The Lord works out everything to its proper end, even the wicked, for a day of disaster, end quote. God's authority is not illegitimate. His exercise of it, his admonishments, are always just and good by definition. As a matter of faith, the text of the Bible declares it's God worthy of our trust. This is the core issue. Lawlessness obeys only power. The scripture tells us that God does intervene against the lawless and wicked right now in some ways we can identify. But God also does not appear to intervene at times when we imagine he should. Trusting God to be the person he is, declared to be by the Bible, is the movement believers make in living their lives. The critics, the defiant, the lawless, live their lives as they see best. The devoted try to live their lives as God describes. The Bible Bard presents what the Bible teaches about a topic. I'm not trying to convert you to a religion. The Bible Bard podcast is instead informational. We're talking about what the literature of the Bible actually states, the ideas and concepts it presents, because most people have never engaged with biblical thoughts. Make up your own mind whether you agree or disagree with the Bible's pronouncements. This is the way the Bible Bard works. Brief recitations, closely focused, no distractions, no rabbit trails. Follow the Bible Bard on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Send the Bible Bard any question or remarks that you care to offer to BibleBardUS at gmail.com. Glad to hear from you.